All right, number 33 gets to the cylinders, which the SAT really likes for some reason. They love to put cylinder questions in the test. I really don't know why, but they come up a lot. And you probably have encountered the cylinder formula at some point, but you don't need to have memorized it because it is provided to you if you flip back to the beginning of the section, they always have these reference charts with a lot of geometry formulas. Not all of them, but most of them. And so if you're ever on a geometry question and stuck, make sure you flip back. See if there's a, a formula that they're giving you that you could use. And in this case, it's the cylinder formula, which is right there. Volume equals pi r squared h. So when we go back to the question, the first thing we should do is write that down. Let's make sure we didn't make a mistake and just make sure we have the right formula to start. But then it's just a matter of filling in what we know. We don't know the volume. That's what they're asking for. Pi stays the same, and we're given the radius, right? So the other problem in this question that kind of throws people off is that the height is a little ambiguous. This is a good example just to like acclimate yourself to the SAT's wording. When they say that there is one possible value, what they mean is that there's multiple answers to this question. And that that's going to mean that you probably need to make a decision somewhere in your process. So in this case, they don't give us a height. They give us a range of heights, 7.75 to eight inches for the height. We're gonna need to pick something. And I might pick something different than you picked and we're gonna get different answers, but the point is there are multiple possible answers because we just need to pull the trigger and make a choice. So don't be afraid to do that. For some reason, a lot of people get thrown off by these questions and they just don't like choosing. You have to make a choice here. I am going to choose that my height is 7.5 eight uh, inches. So that fits in the range. And now I'm just going to use the calculator to figure out what the volume is. So pi times four times 7.8. And some calculators have a little pi button. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right there. And uh, if not, remember pi is 3.14, but you could do it either way. So pi times four times 7.8. And I get my volume to be 98.018 with some extra decimals. So remember, there are always instructions about what to do with decimals. They, they If you're going to have to round, they're going to tell you where to round to. So make sure you round correctly. In this case, they want the nearest cubic inch. So I drop the decimals in this case, and I'm rounding down to 98. So that is my answer to this question. It's not the only answer. The correct possible answers are 97, 98, 99, 100, and 101. All acceptable. But if you had bubbled, let's say, 98.5, you would be wrong because they want an even number, a, uh, an integer, not a decimal. So 98.5 is within this range, but wouldn't be an acceptable answer. So you've got to be careful there when they tell you to round. They mean business. There's no partial credit for getting close. You have to follow instructions. But the biggest thing is with cylinders, just always get that formula on the page and then start working. The formula is usually the first thing you need to do no matter what.